Okay, so today we're doing a, um, well, I'm eating a bunch of stuff, but um, I'll be covering the other stuff later, but today, right now, I am making a, what is it, a chanterelle chowder, um, because I saw this, uh, someone just mentioned this online, and I figured, why not? Um, I really like making, or I used to like making clam chowder a lot, and um, I haven't had any for... I don't know, four years or something. So it's about time I make something really good. Um, I've made like potato chowder and broccoli, cream of broccoli soup and that stuff. I like that stuff. Um, but I really like the way that mushrooms almost, um, they don't like, I don't know, they can pretty much replace, like they have their own unique flavor, but it's like completely... I don't know, it, it's very comparable to like clam chowder or to meat sometimes even, like oyster mushrooms and those sorts of things. So today it's going to be a creamy chanterelle chowder. Um, and I have made Manhattan chowder before if you've ever tried that, but that has like tomatoes and I used to add like vodka into it and stuff and like a bunch of celery and that was really good, but um, that'll have to be another day. Today it is just a chanterelle chowder. So going to be like more of a creamy, um, I don't know, like vegan cheese consistency or something. It'll be good though, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to be filming the other direction, but yeah, this is the view from here. <laughs> This is the direction the camera is supposed to be. And so far I just added one teaspoon of salt. I'll probably be adding more. And then like a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'll probably be adding more of that also because I like a lot of pepper in my chowder. Um, my son probably does not. So I don't wanna make anything that he wouldn't like. So we have a mix of one small white onion, about a cup of cauliflower and about a cup of chopped carrots. Okay, then we have one and a half baked russet potatoes. Honestly, these were just like leftovers. So with chanterelles, you just want to brush them off as much as you can, brush off all the dirt, and then rinse them quickly, and then I'm gonna actually pat them dry just because we're adding them, the, them to the soup, and then I'm just kinda gonna tear them up. They kind of shred just like meat. Um, just like, it's kind of like, looks like chicken or something. <laughs> it's pretty neat if it'll focus. Can we see? It's kind of blurry still. There we go. Okay, and then you can also see the, where are those? The false gills, those are kind of neat. Um, that is why they're really easy and easily identified because they don't actually I mean they kind of look like gills from far away but they have like wrinkles and stuff and um, not exactly like they're not really separated from the um, underside of the mushroom so that's one of the reasons why chanterelles are really easy to identify okay so all together that was about one pound of chanterelles um, or maybe three cups chopped, um, somewhere around there. And if you don't have chanterelles available, you could always use, I was thinking like shiitake or oyster mushrooms, or you could even try combining a few of them. Um, this soup would be pretty good with probably any of those. And since we have the Kite Hill cream cheese and Hunter hasn't been liking it anymore, I've been eating it um, because I like it also. I normally buy it for him, but um, this stuff's really awesome. Look for, there's a paper on, there's usually like cardboard on it in the packaging. There's usually a coupon for a dollar off of it. So just always check for that. And it's on the inside, so you have to open it up. Um, they don't mind usually at Whole Foods, but anyways, I added three quarters of a cup of that into it. And so it's basically just cultured almonds and water with like, I'm not sure what they add. They add enzymes to it and like salt or something. And so if you don't have that available, you could always, I was just planning on blending up cashews or you could use macadamia nuts or almonds and it would give pretty much the same, very similar, similar flavor. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty good. I just, I'm using this because I have this available and I was actually going to use cashews. So <laughs> then I remembered I had that stuff. So I figured I might as well use it. And so from here, I'm going to add about um, 
what is that, a teaspoon of garlic powder. Um, if you have fresh garlic, add fresh garlic. That stuff's better. But this is just what's here. And I'm kind of lazy. I don't like um, having to get the garlic all over my hands. <laughs> um, so then I'm going to do the squeeze of one lemon. This is a half. I'm going to add the other half. And the last part of it is five cups of water. Um, we might add more. We want to make sure everything is covered. That looks just about right. It's all the way to the top. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to check on this every once in a while. I want to make sure nothing's like boiling over or, um, you know, if it's cooking too much of the water off, then I want to make sure it has enough water. And last but not least, I almost forgot, I wanted to add some thyme. So this is probably about... Oh, uh, like three quarters of a teaspoon chopped or something of fresh thyme. It's actually kind of dried now because it's been in the fridge for a little while. But yeah, you could always add parsley. Parsley is really good in chowder also. But um, yeah, thyme also is good in it. So we're going to close this up and we're going to let it cook for a while. Um, so I have mine set on high. Um, you always want to like... If you have, I don't know, maybe all day for it to cook, then you could put it on low, um, but that might take more than like 10 hours. So right now I have about five hours. Um, so I'm gonna let it cook for five hours and I'm gonna check on it every once in a while and make sure it's not boiling over or that it... Okay, so this has been cooking for about five and a half hours now. I let the lid stay off because it had a little bit of extra or a little bit too much water in it. Um, and the other thing is that the cream cheese did not really mix very well with the water. So if you're blending up cashews and stuff, it's just going to mix right away. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like um, one of these, the blender full, or well, it's a small blender, but um, one of these full and I'm going to blend it and then I'm going to add it back into the soup and that's going to kind of help it mix together a little better. And basically it's just for looks. It's not really like... There's no purpose for blending up soup, and if you have one of those soup blenders, you could use that, um, or one of those cup blenders. But, um, yeah, it is pretty much ready. Okay, I added in the blended soup. It made it look a little more creamy or smooth instead of more of that chunky texture, so I like that. <laughs> that looks better. And then I added about a teaspoon and a half of parsley and about another tablespoon of salt just for flavor um, and it is ready to dish up um, except for I did think of one more thing I wanted to add to it so <laughs> um, it's something actually it's more for convenience and the fact that I want to eat it right away but um, or sooner than later but yeah um, I wanted to add one of these <laughs> because then this um, one bag of it's not gonna like um, it's not gonna freeze it or anything it's just gonna melt and defrost the corn and then it'll make it actually edible because right now it's like burning hot <laughs> okay here is the final bowl of soup <laughs> it is um, really good I added a little bit of extra black pepper and yeah, I'm going to go have some dinner. <laughs>